Sexual energy is a source of creativity, inspiration, and motivation. And when we learn how to harness this energy, we can redirect it towards achieving our goals and living a fulfilling life. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the two pillars of sexual energy transmutation and a practical guide so you can start practicing it today. My name is Mayara. Welcome to my channel, the place to be if you like to expand your consciousness and master the power of your sexual energy. There are several potential benefits to sexual energy transmutation, including increased focus and productivity, greater creativity, improved relationships, and improved self-awareness and self-control. So, right now, I'm going to share with you what are the two pillars of sexual energy transmutation and how you can start practicing it starting today. But first, I would like to let you know that the registration for my Sacred Sexuality 101 online course is now open, but only for a few days. So, if you like to dive deep into mastering the power of your sexual energy and upgrading your entire life by learning my four-step framework, then check it out by clicking the link at the description box below this video or visit this website's address that is showing up here on the screen. Now let's get to it. So the first pillar of sexual energy transmutation is harnessing your sexual energy. And during this phase of sexual energy transmutation, what you want to do and what you want to focus on is moving your sexual energy out of your pelvis and up and down your spine. So you want to channel it through and circulate this energy. The intention here is that your sexual energy is not just accumulated around the pelvis, and you want to move this energy through the spine because then you get to stimulate your higher energy centers. So we are talking about our hearts, our throat, third eye and crown. So we are moving the sexual energy out of the pelvis and the sexual energy is very primal, even quite animalistic, is creative by nature because it's the energy that we utilize to create life and it's also the energy that motivates us to accomplish many things in life and even to find a partner. Now, you want to move this fiery, creative, powerful energy up to stimulate these other energy centers within your being. And yeah, so you can do that by practicing some specific kinds of meditations or visualization techniques that are moving energy up your spine or that are circulating energy up and down your spine. So you want to focus on moving your energy up and when you're working with the microcosmic orbits with an energy channel like a meridian along our spine. I say a meridian, you know, because meridian, that's what people are more familiar with when we talk about energy channels. So the microcosmic orbits would be something like that. So it's an energy channel. So you can be working with the microcosmic orbit that is like this oval shape, creating a loop up and down the spine, up the back, down the front, or even just bringing energy up. So there are different um, visualization techniques, meditation techniques. You can even um, combine it with breath work. You can really play with it. And there are many different ways that you can practice this. I have a sexual energy transmutation guided meditation available on my website. Or if you join any of my programs, like my online course that is open now, I can guide you as well step by step. And also, during these aspects of sexual energy transmutation, so you also want to focus on your goals. So you want to utilize right, the sexual energy that you are moving up through breath work techniques, meditation techniques, just intention as well. And you gotta get, you want to get clear on your goals. So that's when you want to sit, journal, and really reflect on what are the main things that you want to accomplish in your life, what are the things that are important for you. It may be like a, something for your health, it may be like a creative projects, a new business, anything that you want to really set your, you know, 
a focus and <laughs> into achieving that, then you're gonna focus on that and you're gonna get to work. You're gonna, you know, go for action. So when you practice these guided meditations or even a solo meditations, right? Because they don't have to be guided. And when you are focusing on your projects and goals in these ways, so you can just do it naturally. Like you can ideally, if you have some time every day to meditate and to practice this, you know, this will be great. It's like in the morning every day. And then you have your day, you know, in a way that you are focusing on doing the things you really want to do and finding, making time for them. Or you can also utilize like a moment when you feel sexually aroused naturally. And instead of self-pleasuring, you can focus on these meditations, for example. So you are utilizing the energy if it comes up randomly throughout the day or night. So instead of self-pleasuring and just having a peak orgasm, you can then do these meditations. Or as well, you can on purpose activate your sexual energy by self-pleasuring, but you are not going to have a peak orgasm. You are just going to you know, self-pleasure just enough to awaken that, but then you're going to go into meditation and you're going to channel the energy. And you can do that a few times when if you feel like you're cooling down, you can also self-pleasure again, just awaken some pleasure sensations in your body and then do this meditation. So just a recap, you can just do these meditations on a daily basis, wake up and do it. That's how, you know, I love to do, wake up, do it for 10 minutes and, and you know, then you go for, for your day, focusing your goals and your projects, or you can utilize the energy of, you know, feeling turned on whenever it comes to you. If you're just sitting and working and now you felt turned on, you know, and, or something at night, in the morning, then you can utilize the energy and then sit to meditate and utilize, like, since this energy is already awakened within you, you can then just meditate and really channel through especially if you're not wanting to masturbate or have sex at the moment or you can also on purpose self-pleasure just enough to awaken this energy you don't need to do that you can just do the meditation but you know some people like it and this is just something that you can play around so yeah this is one of the pillars of sexual energy transmutation and this is for men and women right and now the second pillar is sexual practices for singles and for couples. So depending if you are single or in a relationship, then you can go about it in a different way. And just remember that you don't have to practice these two pillars like separately. You are practicing them simultaneously. So these meditations, moving energy up your spine, you can do that regardless if you are single or in a relationship. What is going to change now is when you get to the actual sexual practices. So I'm going to share a bit what you can do if you are single. So if you are single and you are practicing sexual energy transmutation, or if you are in a relationship but your partner is up for this and you maybe never done this before, that's when you want to practice gaining control of your sexual energy. And this includes short periods of sexual abstinence. So, for example, um, usually you can aim for 21 days of sexual abstinence when you are not masturbating and you are not having any peak orgasm. And you can go for like two, you know, to three, maybe even four weeks, you know, but uh, usually 21 days is a great time to aim for. And then you only have a um, peak orgasm, right? If you are a man, you're going to have an ejaculation. If you are a woman and you choose to self-pleasure, you may have, you know, usually a clitoris orgasm, if that's what you enjoy and, and know how to do or anything else, any other kind of orgasm you enjoy. Then you would wait 21 days until you do that. And while you are abstinent, you are really focusing on your meditations, no self-pleasure in this case, right? You're focusing on your meditations, you're focusing on your goals. Anytime sexual energy come up, you channel it through meditation and through actually creative work, you know, and yeah, projects, goals, the things you want to do. And then you're going to have your release and your, you know, a peak orgasm. 
every 21 days and you can do this maybe two three times in a row something like that and this is a practice that you can do just to gain control and mastery over sexual energy you don't necessarily have to do this forever a lot of people that are more on the sacred sexuality and tantra path especially males they choose to um, not ejaculate very often and they may have it as a lifestyle where they are only ejaculating like once every two, three weeks or four weeks and they're not ejaculating all the time. So for people that are on this path, but you don't have to, you can choose what's best for you, right? But um, this is like for you to gain control and mastery over sexual instincts because most of the times we, you know, since we go through puberty, we start self-pleasuring and then we start developing sexual habits that sometimes are not healthy. Not saying that everyone needs this, but maybe you have already a health, very healthy relationship with your sexual energy, but only when you take that out of the picture for the moment, then you can have time to reflect and see how your sexual energy may be actually controlling you in certain occasions, which is what you don't want. It's okay to self-pleasure, it's okay to have sex, it's okay to enjoy, but you have to be aware of what is your motivation behind it, right? Like, are you just not being able to be alone? Are you even, you know, staying in relationships that are not good for you or getting into relationships or situationships that are not good for you because your sexual energy is just like, too much and you're just looking for someone so it's important or even masturbation is it becoming a um just an habit that you are not even aware of because their sexual energy is like has a control and holds over you or is your masturbation habits something that you choose you know to enjoy and love yourself so it's just good to do this at least once in life you know so if you're single it's a great time to do so you can learn about yourself and you can journal about your experiences and yeah and you may learn a lot about yourself and then after you finish your 21 days you know two three times then you may choose you know do i want to continue something like this or not and in my you know in my personal experience I, then i did not want or need to just be counting this amount of days. I just let it be more natural. I would naturally go in you know, a few weeks and then just going with my own energy, my own flow. Uh, not restricting myself as well because that's not the, the answer, right? To just restrict, no sex, no masturbation at all. That's not necessarily, I believe, the best way. And not like overindulging. So yes, if you're single or if you're in a relationship but you've never done it and your partner, your partner is supportive of you doing it or up for it, then you can do that as well. Now, if you are already in a relationship and you want to practice, that's when you can practice non-ejaculatory sex. This is also an aspect of sacred sexuality and tantric sex when you learn how to make love without having to ejaculate. And you will do pretty much the same thing when you are going, if you're a man, you are going to ejaculate once every uh, two, three to four weeks, more or less, you know, but you're gonna have sex without ejaculating and you can have sex as often as you like, as long as you don't get to a point of ejaculating. And there are many benefits for that. I have many videos, so I'm not really gonna get into it on this video. I have many videos talking about it and what you can learn from this experience, but there is a lot that you can learn about yourself and you can even learn how to last longer in bed and having different kinds of, you know, orgasmic experiences or even just pleasurable, sexual pleasurable experiences that are not related to ejaculation. So you can learn a lot by doing that. And if you're a woman, if orgasm comes, that's okay, enjoy it but uh, you would not be trying to have the clitoral orgasm if that's the only orgasm you know. So you would refrain from that. If you are someone that you only know how to orgasm through clitoris or if that's always your go-to, then you would avoid that and you would focus more on vaginal orgasms and learning vaginal orgasms. And, and if you're not having any orgasm at all or, you know, or if you feel the need to have a clitoral orgasm, then you can do um every three four you know <laughs> two three four weeks like that and the only reason you're doing that as well is like so you can learn how to first you know um focus on learning 
vaginal orgasms if that's something that you are interested you know if you are already a pro and a master then you just get to enjoy sex and you don't have to think about it but um, a lot of women they can only orgasm through clitoris stimulation and never really vaginally so this can help as well so if you focus on that and take away the clitoris orgasm out of the picture so for a short period of time so this is something that you can do if you are uh, in a relationship and you can also watch you know my videos here or maybe join my program and and you can learn more about sacred sexuality and tantric sex and other fun practices that you can do for for healing for pleasure for personal and spiritual growth and even to enjoy different kinds of sexual experiences so Yes, I hope that this video clarified a little bit uh, of your questions. I know that this topic it can be so simple, but because it is so simple, it can also be complex and people have questions, you know, what is the difference if I'm a woman or not a man? So yes, you can just practice the first pillar, just doing the meditations and, you know, and just focusing your goals and using that as a way to focus on your goals, you know, and channel your energy in this way, harness your energy in this way. Or you can also practice together the second pillar that is the sexual practices, you know, for like sexual abstinence for some time, gaining self-control or um, non-ejaculatory sex with your partner and practicing like tantric sex. Um, I definitely recommend that you watch my videos about tantric sex and tantric uh, orgasmic breathing so you can learn how to properly breathe to have a better experience, you know, out of tantric sex and uh, best positions, how to move, you know, it's usually a sex that is more meditative and more a bit slower, it's not like fast paced. So yes, you can, there's so much you can watch here on my channel if you want to learn more. And also remember that the registration for my Sacred Sexuality 101 online certification course is open, but only for a few days. So if you are interested in learning my 40-step framework to, to help you master your sexual energy and transform your life, then you can click the link at the description box below this video. And this course is much more than just sexuality. It's really about personal growth, um, personal transformation, and help you connect with your purpose and really learning how to utilize the power of your sexual energy in healthy ways. So yes, I hope to see you there. As always, if you have any questions, put it down below at the description box below this video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!